I'll never forget the day I wanted to die. That's actually something I wrote down in a journal when I was incredibly sick and something that I'd feel a little uncomfortable admitting here on a camera. But the reason I share that is it's going to be part of one of my upcoming books here in the next couple years. One thing that I found going through my own healing journey was that something surprisingly useful besides medicine was journaling. And I found that by journaling certain aspects of my healing journey, it was one of those things that gave me not only insight into what was working, what was not working, and what new things I had to try because in in a world where symptoms are chronic and they're always coming and always going and I was losing faith very very often I found that this one through line keeping a healing journal profoundly changed my life. So in this video, I wanna share three exercises you can do today. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. Let's jump in. Now, one day when I was really sick for a couple of years, I went in for a medical visit with one of my mentors. He said, Alex, how are you doing? And I said, you know, I'm honestly feeling pretty bad today. And I'm feeling bad, not because my symptoms are bad, but because I'm feeling very discouraged. Maybe we're not making progress or I've backslid or things are just not going to work or they aren't going to work out. And I found that to be very challenging because in a world where for some of us who have had chronic illnesses or chronic diseases where you're sick for years, this is no longer a, oh, in three weeks, you'll be feeling better from your cold or okay, in a month or two, you may be feeling better if you just rest. When healing is a months to years long journey, it is very easy to be discouraged. And what you do in the interim is very important because it determines whether you are going to be sticking around with the rituals that will allow you to heal or whether you just give up and accept and resign yourself to the fact that you'll just be sick forever. So in this particular case, my symptoms were flaring up a lot because while I had been doing quite well, Recently, I was traveling abroad somewhere and it was really all of the jet lag and all of the bad sleep and a couple nights of insomnia and weird sleep, you know, not falling asleep till five in the morning and having to get up before the breakfast. And after that went on for a couple days, I started feeling really run down and really sick again. And I felt a lot of my old symptoms coming back. And it was around that time that I decided that I was going to begin keeping a journal. And the log would be, Yes, on one level, just a boring log of my symptoms, where they were that day, what's better, what's worse. But also, I made a promise to myself that I would keep a log of every single therapy that I was trying and really to see what was working and what was making a difference. Because I knew in the moments where I was discouraged, I was likely to stop even doing things that I knew had historically helped me. And I was maybe likely to get more shiny object syndrome and to try something far out there or something unconventional when I already had something that was working, but maybe I just needed a bit more time. So why I think keeping a healing journal is very, very profound and very, very useful is a number of reasons. Number one, the fact is that when healing takes months to years, if you have a condition like that, it's very important to show yourself that symptoms come and go, right? Because inevitably what happens is once you begin feeling well for a long time, the second you stop feeling well, then you look back and you're like, oh God, I'm never gonna get better. It's getting worse what I'm doing isn't working, the therapies, the medicine, the whatever, the acupuncture is not working. And actually everything's fine. It just, your symptoms flare up in the fall a little bit, or they flare up when you begin eating a certain way for a few months, or you move into a period of high work stress and boom, your insomnia and anxiety symptoms come back for three, four weeks or for a month or two, unless you treat them right away. One, you can really glean a lot about the cyclical nature of healing and of symptoms. Number two, you can keep referring back to what worked, right? I'll never forget, part of my log was keeping a log of what was working for me. So on the days where I was discouraged, I could go back and I could request that mentor, hey, could I book another visit? Because the formula you gave me really fixed my symptoms quite a lot. I knew it took a week or two, but after that I was doing so much better. Reminding yourself of that versus what a lot of people do and even my own patients they'll come in and they're doing amazing they have a 95 percent reduction of symptoms within a couple months for a difficult illness not just your everyday normal digestive problem or anxiety or insomnia and then the first time that they drop off right their symptoms come back they have a stressful work period they maybe cancel a return visit and then they get discouraged maybe i don't see them for a year and they're like oh yeah i saw these other practitioners it didn't really work i came back to you and right away it worked and they had forgotten that i so far had been the person that got them the best clinical results but because they forgot it's very common to forget when you feel well shocking they go see someone else or they try something else and it doesn't work. So really to keep a log of what's working and what's not working is incredibly valuable. Now journaling is only one of the non-medical healing rituals that I recommend, but I've also put together a free guide which is four daily healing rituals that you can use potentially live a longer life, right? Improve your longevity and feel better. Now it's the first link below this video and in it we discuss some healing rituals from traditional Chinese medicine, East Asia, and the case study of a man who supposedly lived to be 250 years old. I don't think he did. 
did, but the rituals he gives and his story are very powerful from a traditional Chinese medicine point of view. So check it out. Now journaling ritual number one is what's the best I can do today? Why I think this is very important is because sometimes if you're chronically ill or you have a lot of symptoms going on or it's just a regular day for you, you have to just figure out what's the best I can do today. And one thing I love is looking at the kind of vibrational or emotional spectrum that David Hawkins talks about. And I find it very interesting because at the bottom of the spectrum is really the lowest emotional states. Depression, apathy, fear, loathing, indifference, right? These states that are negative. We know they're negative because we don't feel well when we're in them. We also know they're negative because when we see people in them, we don't want to be around them. There is a sort of energetic or vibrational quality, if you like those words, about these emotional states that are contagious. And we feel them around people. But some days you actually feel that way. That's where you are on that spectrum. So what do you do? You know, for me, one thing that I found was that by just keeping a log of where I am on that spectrum and just trying to find the best vibrational level that I can that day was sometimes the best win I could have. So for example, let's say you're really feeling really ill. You've been having insomnia, a lot of symptoms, you're in pain, you're grumpy, you don't want to be around people. But you know what? Today, rather than negativity, I can just be in a state of acceptance. I'm not in a good mood. This is not going to be a good day for me. I am not going to feel well, but today I'm going to be at a higher vibrational state than negativity and fear and loathing and hatred, depression. I'm in pain, but I'm going to accept for right now that this is where I am. So I accept it. That will make your day a little bit better because on this spectrum, that is an improvement in terms of emotional health and emotional healing. And every step up the emotional spectrum, he calls it the vibrational spectrum, has a profound effect on physiology, which is important to remember. Anger, depression, fear have a distinct effect on physiology that is maladaptive, that is the opposite of healing, right? Shooting off stress hormones versus fun, positive expectation, joy, these also have a profound effect on the body that is different in terms of hormones and neurotransmitter production and the effect on the nervous system, the adrenal system, HPA axis. So keep that in mind. These states are attached to certain physiological outputs as well. It's kind of interesting to think about. So just finding what is one step up that vibrational spectrum that I can go according to David Hawkins because it will make a difference. Now, if you guys didn't know, I do work with a limited number of patients in my private practice in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. And sometimes one of the things we work with is with trying to figure out where they are on this spectrum when things are very, very difficult. You know, this is sort of my homework to them to try your best to just move one rung up that ladder. So if that's something appealing to you guys, you can always reach out and call or email my private practice, my clinic, and we can always figure out a good time to chat more. But that is something that I do for a limited number of people every single month. The second useful healing journaling exercise is what's been working. Like I know in my journey, I can look back when I was having all those gut issues, the only things that worked were a specific carbohydrate diet and then really 80 or 90% traditional Chinese medicine formulas. So I actually put that on a little post-it note on my computer and on my desk. And I was like, for your healing, do one of these two things every single day, the majority of the days, and you will feel well. Now, if you know for anxiety or depression or whatever it is, that daily exercise or daily time connecting with people, building your community is the thing that makes you feel the best and leads to the best improvement in your symptoms, then actually write down what has worked the best so far and just do more of that. It's often surprising how often people will forget that when they begin to feel well. You know, I have patients in my practice, they drop off sometimes for a year or two years, they come back, they've been on this whole medical odyssey. And I'm like, well, why don't you just call us, call me? Because last time I checked in your chart, we had a 95% reduction in your symptoms. And people forget when they feel well, just like they forget when they're not doing well. So going back to the things that have worked the best for you is surprisingly underrated. What do they say? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? So if things are working for you, just keep doing what's been working. And when symptoms flare up again, just go back to what's working. But to keep a log of that is very illuminating. Now, the third thing is, am I seeing progression over the months or the days? Now, this is very, very important for issues that are very chronic. Autoimmune disease, Lyme disease, chronic fatigue, really severe depression, all kinds of issues that are very, very chronic and take months to years to treat or potentially resolve or functionally reverse. These are things that we don't measure the improvement in a 24 hour window. In my mind, as the practitioner, right? As Dr. Alex, I'm thinking, let's give this person this formula for three, four weeks, see how they're doing when they come back. If we see a five to 10% improvement, but clear, great, we are right on track. Over a year, they can be off most of those medications. But sometimes when we're in the patient's body and we're sick, we're thinking yesterday was my best day of no depression, today is my worst day. It's not working, but that's not necessarily true because a lot of what's happening is those day-to-day -day fluctuations can be contextual. I exercised that day, I didn't that day. I had insomnia that night, I didn't that night. I ate something I don't normally 
normally eat. I ate what I normally eat. I had stress at work over these three weeks. It was a normal work week. All of these factors contribute to the daily vicissitudes, the fluctuations of your symptoms. And what I found was that what is very helpful is keeping a journal to see over a month long period, are we improving? Not over a 24 hour period, but over a month period and over a quarter, a season, am I improving? You know, when you look at giant companies and the way they forecast their revenue, a lot of them, they look at quarterly earnings because there may be giant fluctuations day to day, week to week, even month to month, but they want to see quarter over quarter growth. And so in the same way, we want to see quarter over quarter or season over seasonal growth. And that's something that I have to remember to reiterate to my patients and to myself, because you can't always measure healing in a 24 hour window. Sometimes it does take a month, 30 days to begin seeing the fog lifting, for example. Now there are all kinds of healing practices you guys can do. And one thing I'm very excited about is I just launched this online program, a portal called the Healing Library, which is a series of online programs on healing with traditional Chinese medicine. And I launched my first one, Introduction to Healing with Traditional Chinese Medicine. You guys can check it out. It's the link right below this video that's pinned. And it's really interesting because we talk about all the various healing modalities inherent within traditional Chinese medicine, not just acupuncture, but traditional formulas, not just formulas, but moxibustion, moxibustion and bodywork practices and qigong, where breath work meets energy healing, that kind of thing. So this is a brand new online program that I launched because some of you may never be able to see me or come to see me in person, but this is a way to learn about practices you can do in your day-to-day -day life as well. So before you guys go, I have more on this exact topic of journaling or certain daily practices in this video right here.